within a few weeks at the time of this recording coming into the biblical feasts. And so I'm going to do a series of videos that give a sense of what the fall feasts of Israel are. The first of the fall, three fall feasts is Rosh Hashanah, and I'm going to concentrate on Rosh Hashanah here. Rosh Hashanah is translated into English as the head of the year. The feast in ancient times was called Yom Teruah, and Yom Teruah meant the feast of blasts or the feast of shofar blasts. So in looking up these three feasts, Leviticus chapter 23 is where God lays out his calendar. And the fall feasts are not the beginning of the description. Instead, what you have is you have Passover and the spring feasts. And then 50 days after Passover, you end up having Shavuot or Pentecost. And then there is a season of working on the harvest. These festivals that God gave to the children of Israel as they came out of Egypt was according to a farming or an agrarian schedule. So the year biblically starts in the spring, starts with Passover, then moves to Shavuot, which is the feast of the very first fruits of the season, and then we move to the fall feasts. Rosh Hashanah, or Yom Teruah. This is a feast where there's not a lot said about it in the Bible, but what is said is that this is a feast that is to be a sacred gathering. Everybody's to come together, and everybody is to get to a place where there is the blowing of a shofar or the blowing of a ram's horn. Now, what ends up happening is... In ancient times, the ram's horn was used for communication in a whole variety of different ways. One of the things that ended up happening with the ram's horn was every month when the moon was watched and it was time for a new moon, which meant a new month, there would be blasts of the shofar. And as village after village heard the next village over blasting the shofar, so too they would as a marker that we are in a new month now. Likewise, another thing that ended up happening with the shofar was we, were, we did not have Wi-Fi, we did not have radio frequency telecommunications, and in communication in battle, there would be a series of using shofars, and the shofars would have different codes, they would have different blasts, they would have different ways of signaling and communicating. So if a military army was across a battlefield and they had a left flank, they had a center flank, they had a right flank, they had different divisions taking care of different parts of the battle, the way that they would communicate would be with the blasts of shofars. And as you might imagine, there would be different signals that would be recognized. There would be signals for pressing forward and attacking. There would be signals for retreat. And this was the way that the military communicated was through the use of a shofar and the, through the use of making blasts that would be instant communication across different parts of the military in the Middle East and in Israel. But Rosh Hashanah, or Yom Teruah, is not about necessarily the military use of the shofar, and it's not necessarily about marking the months, although that is also how it was used. Ultimately, what ends up happening with Yom Teruah, or Rosh Hashanah, is this is a mark of revival and renewal and a mark of awakening. This is a signal to the people of God that we have had an intense 
period of time of work. We have had a time of protecting the flocks. We have had a time of planting. We have had a time of weeding. We have had a time of taking care of the harvest so that we would have food that is going to sustain us and take care of us. But when it comes to this feast and the beginning of the feast, this is the first of three feasts that happen in quick succession to each other. And with the feast of Rosh Hashanah, what you have is a reminder, an awakening to the importance of spiritual reality. Rosh Hashanah, or Yom Teruah, in a real sense, is a feast of revival. It's a feast of awakening. It's a feast of recognizing that there is spiritual reality there is importance. There is a sense that it is a not enough for us as a people to simply be aware of what it takes to physically sustain us. But we also need to be a people who are aware of the importance of the spiritual reality of our life. So welcome to Rosh Hashanah. Welcome to the blast of the shofars. Welcome to hearing that sound which divides marrow and soul. Welcome to that blast that is intended to awaken your spirit. Welcome to the understanding that it is important that there is a revival, that there is a renewal, and that we are a people who come to a place where we see who God is and where he awakens us to the spiritual reality. And this also prepares and gets us ready for Yom Kippur, for the Day of Atonement, which is 10 days after Rosh Hashanah. And it also gets us prepared and ready for the celebration that is the Feast of Booths, also known as Sukkot, which is the time of celebration for the bringing in of the harvest and for the fact that there is a harvest every year that God uses to sustain his people. But in addition to bringing in the harvest, this is also a celebration that one day when all of this is done, there will be a harvest that takes care of all that God has been doing across history. So Rosh Hashanah, the feast of awakening, the feast of being diligent, the feast of bringing us from a place where we've been working on what we work on and we look forward to the great things that God is going to do next. Shalom.